When looking at the influences on financial management, we first look at internal sources of finance, which is retained profits, and then we move on to external sources of finance, which in this case are debt and equity. And these are sources of finance or where you can get money from for your business that is outside of the business itself. You're not attaining it from within your own business. And when we look at what the syllabus actually requires us to look at, um, within debt financing, we have both short-term and long-term borrowing options, depending on the kind of expenses that you need the money for. And then we also have equity financing, which includes selling shares and then also private equity, depending on the legal structure of your business. Now, for the purposes of this video, we are going to look at short-term borrowing options. Um, and so let's go through them now. When we look at short-term borrowing, this is when you're borrowing amount, an amount of money that needs to be repaid within 12 months. So that's sort of the deadline that you're looking at. And you're using it for your immediate expenses. If you know a bit about the balance sheet, which occurs later in the topic, but if you do know about the balance sheet, there's a section called uh, current assets. And usually your short-term borrowing options are for things like your current assets or your current liabilities. So things like buying stock or paying back your short-term debts or paying off your credit card, things like that. And our three options for short-term borrowing through the syllabus are overdrafts, commercial bills, and factoring. So let's start with overdrafts. Essentially, this is a loan arrangement with your bank where you can take out more money than is actually in your account. So you can go into a negative amount in your account and you've already arranged a, a limit to how much of that you can do. Now, there is interest that's charged daily on this overdrawn amount and it's quite expensive. So the interest that is charged is quite expensive, more than other loans. To give you an example, McDonald's, they have an available overdraft of $3.5 billion. So that means they've arranged with their banks that they can go into $3.5 billion of short-term debt um, and repay that back as long as they're getting charged interest. Currently, they don't use that, but they can. If they're low on working capital and they need quick cash, they are able to do that. So just some general um, advantages and disadvantages of overdrafts. Firstly, they're very convenient. So once you've set your limit with your bank, it's done. You can withdraw that extra amount. You don't have to withdraw that extra amount. You pay it back when you can, and that's it. You don't need to set up a new loan every single time that you need cash money. The only issue with it is that um, there are very high costs associated with it. Another benefit is like all short-term financial options, uh, it provides some sort of funds when you have limited working capital, especially if you have periods of lower sales. This is particularly important for businesses that are quite seasonal. So if you're looking at a ski resort, for example, obviously during summer, they won't be as busy as they usually would, but they still have expenses that they need to pay, whether that's rent, whether that's their electricity bills, etc. So they may use an overdraft in those slow periods to pay off their short-term expenses. And then when they do get that cash flow, they repay it back. Another benefit of an overdraft is that you can actually claim the interest that you pay on it as a tax deduction, because technically it is seen as an expense. So the interest is represented as an expense that you need to keep the business operating. So these are some advantages and disadvantages. Just looking on this side, here are some examples, very, very simplified examples of what a bank account would look like. So for example, business-wise savings accounts here, right now they're in a negative. So they've actually taken money out of their overdraft. So they're in negative 1,200, but they still have $800 available. So that means that they've set an existing limit with their bank of $2,000. They can go up to negative $2,000 in their bank account. If you're looking at business X, they currently have not taken out of their overdraft. So they actually have $567 in their savings account, but the amount that's actually available to them and the amount of cash they can actually take up is $5,567. So they have an existing limit of an overdraft of $5,000. So the second form of short-term borrowing is called commercial bills. And this is quite an interesting one because it's a source of finance that isn't arranged with a bank. It actually occurs with 
businesses who have surplus funds and want to make um, more interest than they would earn in, say, for example, a um, savings account. So commercial bills essentially are an agreement. It's an agreement to repay a short-term loan in the future plus some sort of interest to your lender. The lending period is usually 30 to 180 days. And the good thing about a commercial bill is that it's secured against the business's assets. So if for some reason you are unable to pay your short-term loan back off, you may be liable to sell some of your own assets in order to repay that debt. And usually it's for an amount over $100,000. Now, how a commercial bill works is that businesses sell like an IOU voucher. So it's like a piece of paper that says, I will repay you. In order to attain the funds, you actually have to sell the bill. The bill gets bought by a company who has surplus funds. In the future, at the date that you have specified, that business who sold the commercial bill will repay back the funds with interest to the company who had the surplus funds. If you are unable to pay it back and both uh, companies agree that you can roll this over, you can reassess the commercial bill and recalculate the interest as long as both parties are involved and then you will have a new specified date and a new specified amount. So this is what a commercial bill looks like in a really simplified format. Like I said before, it's like a little piece of paper, an IOU, and here it says that Bevel Sports will pay the holder of this paper 150,000, 150 days from the date below. And you would put the date and it gets signed. Obviously in real life, it's a lot more complicated than that. There's more of a contract sort of structure, but this is the general gist of what it involves. So how this will actually work in practice is that Bevel Sports would sell this paper for $145,000. So say company X is buying the commercial paper or buying the commercial bill. They have the surplus funds. So Bevel Sports will sell this. Company X will pay $145,000. So Bevel Sports is happy. They've now gotten $145,000 to use in their business. But in the future, on the specified date, Bevel Sports will have to pay company X $150,000. And that $5,000 extra is the interest that they get back. The final short-term borrowing option for a business is factoring. And this involves introducing a third party into the mix of paying debts back. Essentially, it is when a business sells its accounts receivable asset to a specialist firm to create cash flow, cash inflow for the business. So just in terms of terminology, accounts receivable, it's an asset that the business has. Essentially, it is the amount of money that the business is owed. So people, so other companies are meant to be paying that business back that amount of money, but they haven't done so yet. And usually businesses have this accounts receivable relationship with their suppliers or if they're supplying to someone else's. They don't pay them back straight away. They usually have a period of 30 days or 60 days when they bill up all the expenses and then they'll just pay in one hit. A really common example of accounts receivable is with mechanics. They use sort of like a form of credit with their suppliers when they're bringing in parts for certain cars. They don't pay them every single time. They put it on an account and then they pay it back at the end of the month or at the end of two months. So what a business actually does is sells that amount to a separate company and they get some cash inflow. So the benefit of that, of that is that they don't have to wait the 30 or the 60 or the 90 days to get that cash back, they can get it relatively quickly. And this is going to improve their liquidity. If you remember our financial objectives, liquidity is one of those. So they will, there is a cost associated with that. And some of that will be some cash, some working capital. But overall, if the business really needs money quickly, this is the way to do it. So how does factoring actually work? Let me give you an example. You have a $200 invoice that's due in 60 days, but you need the money now. So a company owes you $200,000, but you need the money now. What you do is you sell that invoice. So you sell that debt to a factoring company. They immediately give you 90% of that amount. So they will give you $180,000. So you can see how almost instantaneously your cash inflow or your working capital has increased. 
Yes, you haven't got the full amount, but you've gotten a large sum of it. That factoring company then goes to the person who owes you the money and they get the full $200,000 back. Now that might not be straight away. That could be in the 60 days when it's been agreed that they owe that money. What they will do is they'll give you $10,000 of that extra money that they've gotten and they'll keep the other $10,000 as their fee. So in the end, you as a company have received $190,000 180 of that which you receive instantaneously and 10,000 which you receive at the end of the 60 days and the factoring company wins because they've received a $10,000 profit as their fee for that service and so there are some examples of factoring companies in Australia that do that um, you can look at the Australian factoring company or the short-term borrowing options for businesses if you watch the next video you can see the long-term borrowing options